in March 2011, Virginia arrives at Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas for basic training. When I arrived at Lackland, there was a little bit of like excitement. I have absolutely no idea what's going to be coming for me. Lackland Air Force Base is considered the gateway to the Air Force. That is where literally every person who enlists in the Air Force starts their Air Force career. And every year, they'll produce something over 35,000 recruits. And your recruits can be as young as 17, and they are in basic training for eight and a half weeks. At 4.30 the next morning, basic training kicks off with its standard air of shock and awe. The male MTI, he came in the dorm room. He was throwing stuff, pulling stuff out of lockers. It is just a storm of screaming and yelling. I'm not waiting on your asses. Let's go, let's go, let's go. So everybody's in a mass confusion running around. And then he was like, I'm Staff Sergeant Walker. I'm going to be your MTI. Basically, anything that I say goes. Don't question me. He starts telling us to do push-ups, sit-ups, push-ups, run some more, sit-ups, push-ups, run some more. This guy is really intense. His job was to take brand new recruits, fresh to the Air Force, and turn it into an airman. And this officer, a highly respected sergeant, is 25-year-old Luis Walker. To be a military training instructor, he had to be considered an unusually good airman because that's a big honor to be an MTI, and it's, a, and it's a big job. Walker dreamed of being in the Air Force since he was 14 years old. He grows up in less than ideal circumstances in Brooklyn. But he graduates from high school, and he does something that he really dreamed of doing, which is to go into the Air Force. A few years after joining the Air Force, Walker marries his high school sweetheart. They have two sons, now four and seven. On top of that, he's sending money home to a sister and his grandparents. He's, he's a good guy. Five months after he arrives at Lackland, Walker is tasked with overseeing an all-female group of recruits. Among them, Virginia Messick. I've never been in that kind of situation where someone was trying to control me that much. You're technically an adult, but now you have people telling you that you're doing everything completely wrong your entire life. And you have to learn how to do it this exact specific way. It's like, you don't know how to march right. You don't know how to make your bed right. Everything had to be a certain way in our drawers. I mean, people are getting in your face. Making matters worse, isolation from the outside world is taking its toll. Early on, I felt very alone because you can't talk to anybody except for who are around you. All the things that you depended on, uh, your phone, uh, getting on social media, uh, texting friends, that disappears in basic training. I thought to myself, like, why would you put yourself in this situation? During her second week of basic training, Virginia reaches out to her MTI for help. So I told Walker that I needed to get in contact with my friend who is in Afghanistan. And he was like, oh, I'm so glad you came to me. You know, everybody who's on deployment needs someone to talk to. He's like, why don't you just come in the office and you can just email him real quick. Sergeant Walker invites Virginia into his office to contact her friend. The first time Walker called me into the office, he was like, here, just sit in my chair and I'll sit at the chair by the door. I have never seen him so relaxed. He was just very friendly to me. I know it's against the rules, but if he's allowing me to write an email, then that must mean it's OK. The guy who was molding her into an airman and into a warrior was doing something that was so generous. After a few visits, Walker begins to open up to Virginia about his life. I really remember him telling me like in detail about his kids and their ages and his wife and how they were high school sweethearts, just going on and on and on about like either work or personal stuff and was very like across the bar talking to me like I'm his friend. 
Like, it was just a normal conversation. Like, when the door was closed, like, there was no MTI there, essentially. But once back on the outside, there is no trace of friendliness between them. Once, you know, we came outside the doors, there was no special treatment. Sergeant Walker control everything, you know, when they're going to eat, when they go to sleep, when they brush their teeth. We had to ask to go to the bathroom, like we were in kindergarten, and he'd either say yes or no. I mean, I do remember a specific time that he said, no, piss yourself. But in his office, Walker continues his polite demeanor with Virginia, until one day, the conversation changes. Sometimes he would ask me inappropriate questions. He would be like, oh, do you have a boyfriend? And he would go through, like, pictures on my phone. And he said that he thought that country girls were hot. He would ask me, like, oh, you must be like that crazy country girl type, so where's the craziest place you've had sex? His authority was almost limitless, especially in the eyes of his trainees. The chain of command that you now have to follow those who are above you. I don't want to talk about that with him. It made me feel disgusting, but at the same time, like I felt like I had to answer him. And by week three of basic training, there's another shift in Walker's behavior. I mean, it started out like normal. He was sitting in the chair talking. So I'm checking my email, and I hear him stop talking. And But I don't think anything about it. He gets up and moves behind me where there's lockers. And I just start to feel like, like the air changed in the room. And I just was just like, OK, let me just get my email done, and I'll get out of here because I'm starting to feel weird. And then I heard the door like slam closed. And I, like, felt him behind me. 